We are very fortunate in Wales that we have considerable autonomy in the delivery of maths. And whilst most schools follow the national numeracy strategy, we have the freedom to deliver a range of strategies in our schools that we feel will benefit our children. In Port Talbot, how does John exercise this Welsh autonomy? Well, by matching the delivery method to the children's learning strengths. Today, John's come to monitor progress on teaching decimals and he's asked maths guru Richard Dunn to join him as long as he plays TA and supports a group. They're in year four fives hands with Pamela Morgan, class teacher. This is their fifth lesson on decimals and they're ready to explore beyond the first decimal place. Who can think of another way of writing one tenth? Shannon, would you like to come out? There from line. The mathematics that we've taken on board is a very, very different way of teaching mathematics. The children are constantly engaged and it is so physical. They actually see what they're doing. It's not abstract at all. So they have a deep understanding of, of the concrete before they move on to the abstract. How much have I got here? Ricky? Two tenths. Well, can you tell me about these tenths here? One tenth, one tenth. Kerry? Same value, different appearance. Diane. Is there anything here? Sam? No. Is there anything here? Rachel? No. Why don't we need a zero here then? Because there's nothing there and you don't need to put a zero there to show it. One tenth. You can tell me what language this is. Introducing point one and point one naught and naught point one as visual replacements for the vulgar fractions they were familiar with meant they could easily adopt this language. So far, the lesson is largely reinforcement on the first decimal place, in Pamela's view, essential before anything else is introduced. She's making sure that the children are comfortable to add and subtract. However, multiplication is still proving to be a challenge. Four tenths times three equals... Equals. Here's a pile of four tenths. Here's a pile of four tenths. Here's a pile of four tenths. Who thinks they know the answer? Tell me, if you write it down on your whiteboards with your partner. <laughs> right, some of you have this, and some of you have got that. Right, Richard. How much is here? One tenth. How much is here? Two hundredths. How much is here, Richard? Twelve hundredths. Twelve hundredths. And how much is here, Richard? Twelve tenths. Right, can you have a look at your answer and have a think about it? What have you got written down, Richard? Twelve hundredths. And what are we looking for? Twelve. Twelve tenths. Time to move on. But the bridge to hundredths has to be concrete and visual. You could tell me how much is here? How much is here? Nine tenths. Nine tenths. How much is here? How much is here? Martian. Ninety hundredths. Ninety hundredths, Diane. What can you tell me about nine tenths and ninety hundredths? Josh, think. What can you tell me about nine tenths and ninety hundredths? Same value, different appearance. Diane. And they're the same value, but they're a different appearance. Get a partner. Can you look at your circles, please? And can you find 24 hundredths? Find them on your circle and then write them on your whiteboards, please. 
to reinforce the understanding that nine-tenths is the same value as 90 hundredths is essential for them to move on. Once they understand that, they can move on to understand the different values of the, the hundredths and thousandths. Two. Two. How much is there here, Sam? Three-tenths. How much is there here, Sam? Four hundredths. How much is there here, Sam? Five thousandths. Diane. How much is there here, David? Forty-five thousandths. Diane. How much is there here, David? Thirty-four hundredths. Caius. How much is there here? Twenty-three tenths. Diane. And how much is here, Caius? Two hundred and thirty-four hundredths. Diane. And Stephen, right at the back. He's saving this one for you. How much is here, Stephen? Two thousand three hundred and forty-five thousandths. Diane. I'm not going to say the number. I want you all to write it down accurately. And with your partner, please ask how much is here. How much is here? Remember what we're looking for. What are we looking for when we do this? Correct vocabulary. Correct vocabulary, Rachel? Correct number formation. Can anybody else? So they're using the vocabulary in a different way. It's reinforcing how much is here, how many, how much is here. So they're, they're looking at the different values. It's constantly reinforcing and consolidating information that they're receiving. How much is here? 3,135,000. There's been spectacular progress so far. Richard and John look a bit concerned about their group work. These are certainly challenging for any year four. Right, we're going to work in our groups now to do these sums. These are their mathematics groups, uh, their mixed ability, and they have different roles within the group. We have a mentor whose role is to supervise the activity, to listen carefully to the vocabulary that's being used. You have the scribe then that uh, actually writes down what the other children tell them. And then you have the thinkers. They're all thinkers, but these two thinkers have a specific role. One hundred and nine hundred equals ten hundred. Where are you going to put the one underneath? The ten. Goodbye. Six tenths and three tenths. Add one tenth equals ten tenths. I was um, remarkably surprised by the, the, the way the children worked, their attitude, and more importantly, the level of understanding they seemed to grasp, saying the numbers constantly to one another. So they were, they were familiar all the time in the recognition of the tenths, hundreds, and thousands. That came through very strongly. He did really well, because that's a lot, a lot more difficult than the first three done, because you had to carry the figures across, didn't you? So well done. Richard spotted a mathematical equal in Rachel and has the ultimate problem up his sleeve, taking a bigger number from a smaller one, but with thousandths. Five thousandths from two thousandths. Yeah. <laughs> it's called Funny Girl Dinker. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. 
that, just take that off and make it a five, and then you add it like that. Put that back to the top. Twelve thousands. Take away five thousands. It meant that I was to suddenly realise that she had to draw upon early work with what they called funny counting. They had practised that with whole numbers. Now that is the important thing, as these children were drawing on previous learning, and that is exactly what the cooking was about. Good. All together then. How much is there here? Two tenths. Good. How much is there here? Three hundred. How much is there here? Seven thousand. Good. And how much is there here? Twelve thousand. Well it's not just the mathematics that's groundbreaking for year 4-5. Pamela's emphasis on assessment for learning has helped the group stay focused when too. My group can do some of gritties. Um, the answers are all correct and they've worked exceptionally well. Oh, Diane. And Richard, say any feedback about your group? <clears throat> Our scribe is working well, spacing out work and using a ruler to draw lines. They're using the right procedure to work out the sums. Oh, Taya. Rachel, say what? They remembered the funny thing and oh, right, um, yes. how to give a, ten, a hundredth to the thousandths. And um, they're pausing between six hundredths and things like that. Right, would anybody like to tell us what they thought went well about this afternoon? Back the lesson. Stephen, do you got something to say? I enjoy working in groups because if you look at other people's work and you're judging other people's work, it helps you with your work to see the mistakes you might be making. Well done. Give yourselves a really, really big clap. I mean, I think the structure of the lesson was extremely important in, in to getting the children's understanding. I mean, it, there was a good mix of, of concrete operations. The children could see quite physically how the tents came together and what, the, what they were called. I think the fact that they were given quite clear success criteria, it enabled the children to look for the specific points, such as putting the decimal in the right place, saying the numbers constantly to one another. So that helped the children's mathematics ability and also the assessment for learning element of it as well. They scaffold each other and they support each other and it's always work that they've done as a class or we've done together and they're just moving on from there. They're developing a very independent sort of way of working as they're developing their skills of, of, of thinking for themselves and discussing and working out and building on the information that they already have. And I've noticed a real difference in the quality of their written work in their books as well since I've been working like this. You know, it's just an ordinary catchment area and just an ordinary school.